and capability. My goal today is to provide scientific answers to all the questions listed in the slide. And just FYI, we are doing two different presentations this year. So the other presentation, what we are doing, I think it's at 2 o'clock, is an extension of this one. So I strongly recommend going to that one too. Plus, it's a motivational factor for me. So if I see more people in my presentation. And this is how this presentation is going to flow. Three different phases or three different segments. The phase one is going to be the displacement testing or the strain gauge testing what we did on different thread lubricants to study its performance. Number two is going to be uh, the dry phase versus the wet phase comparison. And number three is going to be the life of a sucker rod. And these are some of the engineering concepts what we used in the project. And I'm going to go through one of them, each and one, every one of them. And the first one being <clears throat> circumferential displacement or displacement. And that is the API's definition of displacement. I'm not going to read that, but at this point, we need to be aware of two different terms here. It's pretty simple, the minimum and the maximum displacement value. This is an example or an illustration of our current updated displacement cards. As you can see, the minimum and the maximum displacement values or lines are marked distinctly. There are some other cards, displacement cards, where the displacement is marked by one thick line. And the inner and the outer measurements on that thick line will be your minimum and maximum displacement value. <clears throat> this is one of the most important phenomenon, what happens in a rod coupling makeup application. When a sucker rod is made up with a coupling, the joint basically undergoes two different types of strain or two different types of forces. The first one is going to be the normal strain <clears throat> or the normal force, which is represented by the alphabet A. This acts in a direction parallel to the axis of the rod body. So the normal force or the normal strain is a very desirable attribute, and that represents the load carrying capability of a sucker rod. On the other hand, we have the second type of force or second type of strain called as the shear strain or shear force represented by the alphabet B. This acts in a direction perpendicular to the axis of the rod body. Or in other words, this is a very detrimental attribute <coughs> in a rod coupling makeup application. So our overall goal in this project was to optimize the factors in such a way that the normal strain is maximized and the shear strain is minimized. And these are some of the examples or illustrations of the strain gauges, what we used in our strain gauge test. The picture on your left represents a shear strain gauge, and the picture on your right represents your normal strain gauge. Both had the capability to measure strain in both positive and negative direction, just FYI. And this is the displacement testing machine, uh, what we built, designed, and built in-house. As you can see, it's got a big enough gearbox to shear the largest size of sucker rod, which is inter inch and an eighth. And as you can see from the bottom pictures, those are the wires coming out of the strain gauges and going to the data acquisition system. And the data acquisition system, what we used, had the capability to plot about 10,000 data points per second. So the three key measurements what we needed to do this project was the torque, shear strain, and normal strain. As you saw before, normal and shear strain was measured using the strain gauges, what I just showed you. And the torque was measured using the load cell with, uh, with a woman arm of 12 inches, what you just see here. The, the first phase of the project. The goal of this phase of the project was to determine the best thread lubricant for the rod coupling makeup application. In order to achieve this, we tested about 10 or 12 commonly available thread lubricants and studied its 